Perú. So I think I think we'll do in the 15 seconds will actually start. But this will all just be blinded out of the go ahead. Alright, well, welcome back to the Nub Podcast. I'm the Merce. It's Felton. Felton Hot Glue. This, that was a super great intro. I think that's what, uh, yeah, I'll just time it that way from now on. Yeah, every time. <laughs> no cutting required. <laughs> so, what's going on in the uh, world of uh, nerddom uh, these days? Um, well, you've seen all the memes, I take it, for the uh, Galaxy uh, Note 7? <laughs> yes. Yes, so, they are entertaining. So, I guess the uh, the story is that they're exploding. Like they're not just catching fire, but they're like exploding. Like, I, little all I've bombs. seen is the memes. I, I only know is the iPhone heats up or is that the? I don't know. The, are that, they made by ISIS? No, that no. hits. That hisses, right? Yeah. And the Galaxy and the Galaxy Note Seven is is heating up and exploding. That's literally all I know. Are we outsourcing the Notebook Seven to ISIS or something? I, <laughs> like, I think. You know, they're like ban- now. There's I've, I've seen stories where they're banning them on planes and things like that. I'm like. I've never even heard of that. Like, we're going to oh, ban you, you bringing say, your cell phone. You can't even say ISIS on YouTube anymore. No, I'm talking they about demonetize. the cell phones. I know, but what I'm saying is you can't even say ISIS on YouTube. They demonetize everything. Yeah, I, I thought you were saying you can't say, you, you can't bring ISIS on the plane. Well, of course you, can't you can't bring, bring ISIS, ISIS on, the on the plane anyway. You can't even mention ISIS because they demonetize your trip. No. Well, I think you can bring ISIS as long as they're not a liquid. Yeah. If they're not a liquid, you're okay. <laughs> I ground them up and they're in liquid form. I mean, I thought it was okay. Are you a serial killer, sir? Yes. Yeah. I only kill ISIS. But I only kill ISIS. Yeah. It's like, oh. You're like the Dexter of you're like the Dexter of, uh, of okay. terrorism. Yeah. I guess that's okay. I don't know. Live in Miami, you know, have a cool mm-hmm. little, you know, flat and Yeah. Forensic uh, analyst or whatever he was. Hot sister. Yeah. The weird like you know, I think I'm falling for my old sister kind of thing. I don't know. I, don't I actually know. not a little little side note there, but you know those two were actually married in real life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Are they they're still uh, married though? Well, yeah, I'm sorry, they are married, yes. I apologize. <laughs> Talk about creepy, though. Like, yeah. You're going to play my sister. I'm going to be you know, your brother. Well, they met on the show, right? I don't know, actually. I don't know the whole love story behind that. Maybe mm. somebody who's listening can actually, like, you know, fill us in. Like, give us a little uh, note <laughs> at the bottom of this. Like, you, you idiots. You didn't know. But there was a lot of filling in. Yeah. <laughs> in your windows. <laughs> in your windows. <laughs> to the wall. Oh, sorry. So cell phones are no longer safe. Yep. So that's good. Yeah, I only I had heard the iPhone was making a terrible hiss. But, the iPhone seven. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I suppose like when you produce more iPhones, then you know Papa John's comes out with new and exciting monstrosity <laughs> types of pizzas. Cheeseburger pizza. We're gonna make the gar. I remember one joke about oh, we're the garbage pizza, and it was the onion. That's what it was. Uh, putting garbage on top of pizza and selling it like. It's Unfortunately, not, I could see that happening though. That's not the, too far from reality. Yeah. Like we're we go dumpster diving every night and save food. That's getting. I heard you like away. cheesecake, and I heard you like pizza. So now we make pizza cheesecake. <laughs> that sounds disgusting. <laughs> I don't like that. You say that now until I'm a millionaire <laughs> two weeks from now. <laughs> from until you from... find a way to genetically engineer pizza yes. cheesecake. That's uh. horrifying. Yeah, so, yeah, cell phones aren't safe anymore. And I think maybe the hissing is probably from the dead souls of the workers who create the iPhones, <laughs> possibly. Back to Foxconn. <laughs> oh, God. I'm going uh, to hell for that. This is like, this This whole podcast is like a comic book, basically. We're going to keep going back keep to some making thing. callbacks to... Speaking of callbacks, speaking of going back, um, so anybody that's been listening will probably remember um, when I talked about my experience with LARPing and Vampire the Masquerade. Well, since then, I've brought this conversation up with my buddy who took me to this, uh, to this LARPing situation and, uh, you know, and didn't inform me as to what was going to happen. And, I mean, he was, he was going in when I was talking to him about it because I was, we were with a group of people, uh, group of friends. We were having dinner, you know, uh, steaks and stuff like that, just hanging out. And I brought the story up and he's like, this is bullshit. You always bring this story up. This never happened. We never went to Coco. We never did this. I'm like, I'm like, why would I make this up? Like, this doesn't make me sound any better than you. <laughs> like, so you know. Embarrassed. So I'm like, realizing this is why I don't do gaming anymore. Well, I'm like, no, 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 no. You cannot blame one story about my, you know, about my uh, my pop cherry, as it were, for LARPing as the reason that you don't go and LARP anymore. That's not on me, you know. 
But uh, I would like to have him on the podcast soon. And when we have him on the podcast, I'm just letting everybody know <laughs> there will be a heated debate about this LARPing situation. So you will get both sides of the story. It will not just be me. You'll also get his side of the story. We're going to hash it out here on the podcast. And we can, you know, we can vote as to who was right in the situation and who was wrong. No, I haven't. I haven't talked to him in uh, probably years. Probably, but it was my understanding up until, well, years when I, you know, I just haven't seen him by circumstance mm-hmm. that he was doing uh, werewolf, some type of werewolf larping. I don't think he does any larping anymore. Well, I'm saying though he did though. I don't know. I'm not going to speak on that because he's because I'm already in hot water about the <laughs> well, I just Vampire the Masquerade. He's, so. is he, he's married, right? Mm, he was married, but again, oh, I'm sorry. We're no. getting way too into no, this guy's no, life. I'm, I'm just, I'm he has a to, hangnail. I, think I know who it is, but it's he, like he has a hangnail mind. now. Uh, I believe. <laughs> well, how bad is it? Did his, he? Does his he? Dog I have died. fingernail clippers right here. If he needs it, we can <laughs> mail it to him. No, I'm just trying to put a face to it. I think I know his who it is. His cholesterol level is really out of control. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> My cholesterol level is really out of control. That's how you know you're getting old. Like when you start, con- you start getting concerned about your cholesterol levels. You like- know, I have I have perfect blood pressure. Right? Do you? One twenty over eighty. Okay. Okay. And this this health program. I love how you. I love how you're bragging about that. Again, that's how you know that you're old. Yeah. You're bragging about so your, your blood pressure. I've got one twenty over eighty, mm-hmm. and the second Ooh. year in a row. Okay. Mm-hmm. I've got ideal health. And this is the, this is the funny part. This this thing comes up and it gives you a health assessment just based on your levels. Yeah. Okay. And they go, "Well, uh you're in the range and you're going to you're 60% chance of in the next 5 years of having a stroke." <laughs> like, but but my blood But pressure. it says here that I have perfect blood pressure. Yeah, you're not taking into account that your cholesterol is through the roof. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> it's just... only like it's it's within the normal range. It's not they it's not above the limit. It's not butter yet. But <laughs> no, I got to eat more. But I just I don't fucking understand it because my doctor even was like, yeah, that's bullshit. They're just justifying having higher numbers. Why did I tune into the Nub podcast and they're talking about their health problems? Because <laughs> that's what happens when you get old, kids. Yeah, exactly. This is your future, oh. kids. Stay off my lawn. Don't eat butter by the stick, deep fried. It's not good for you. <laughs> well, I mean, you can do that when you're young. <laughs> you know, speaking of that voice, that reminds me of the goon. The goon. You remember the short? Or no, it's a comic book. Yeah, it's a comic book. The yeah. goon, and I, I always wanted to get into it, but I'm like, uh, I'm like, I'm, I didn't know the goon had a voice. Well, was there a short? Yes. Oh, okay. with um, he was the bad guy in Shoot 'Em Up. Paul. Shoot 'Em Up, Bang Bang. No, the movie bang, Shoot 'Em Up. That's with what I'm saying. Bang Bang. Paul sure. something. Paul. I'm really? normally no. no. He's the bald Giovanni? guy. But yeah, Paul, Paul Giamatti. Giovanni, yeah. yeah, Paul Giamatti. Uh, he did the voice. Giovanni. Of Giamatti. Giovanni. Giamatti. It is Giamatti. Okay, yeah. listen. I, fucking, I'm I believe you. Shit. Do ahead. Do do no. you, boo boo. No. Do you. <laughs> no. Paul. G I G Giamatti. Okay. Yeah. You're right. No, and I it was, was bang myself. bang shoot him up. It wasn't just shoot him up. It was bang bang shoot him up. Look it up. <laughs> Now you're just fucking with me. I don't, I don't know. Uh, you're, you're just making me do this. This whole podcast is going to be about health problems and looking shit up online. It. No, it's called Shoot 'em Up. That's that's it. There's no bang bang. All right, I hate life right now. I lose. Uh, five, Maybe that was on the poster or something. I don't know. Probably. Oh, yeah, the whole that. that whole carrot scene is fucking amazing. By the way, that was that was a fantastic. You know, when scene. he jams it in the guy's yes. eye, or the various the whole things that the he whole does scene from beginning to end, where he's just like going ape shit with the carrot. You know, mm. like he doesn't even bang, gra- bang, he doesn't bang. even grab a gun until like you know the last possible second. So mm. that was just a great movie. But Paul Paul Giamatti, uh, they did a short of Giovanni. Gio- Giovanni. <laughs> they did a short for the goon, mm-hmm. and I remember watching it, going, "Oh, that was funny," you know. You know the concept of the goon being mm-hmm. like a goon, but then he takes over the the crime boss syndicate yeah. and becomes the boss. I'm like, that's that's interesting. You know, I want to see this. And then it died. Well, apparently, I was reading something a while back that they may they might uh, they mate. Where the where the hell am I from? Australia. They might um, bring it back to life. Oh, that would be so cool. So it might get a movie. The comic book is really good. Like I've yeah. only read I've only read a couple story arcs from it, but it's really good. I actually wanted to cosplay the goon, and then I'm like, well, I've never read the comic, and I am not in physical condition. Okay. Well, okay, the physical condition <laughs> thing, whatever, you know. I mean, you can maybe build a suit because, I mean, nobody's in that physical condition. Like, he's... <laughs> <laughs> But you don't understand. I'm 100% oh, okay. point when so, I do. So you're going to have to do steroids, basically, is what yeah, you're saying. Well, maybe. I, I was thinking cybernetic implants. But I was, what I was going to say on that note, as far as the I, I never read the comic book thing, mm. you know, in the cosplay community, at least from what I understand, 
there's actually a divide on that. Yeah. You know, like there are some cosplayers who will cosplay whatever the hell they want. It doesn't matter if they know about the character or not. They just want to cosplay it and they like the way it looks and they do it, you know. Mm. And then there, there, there are those who are really into making sure that they know about the character and that they're accurate. Every so people, facet of the character. So exactly. If they, if they ask about it, you know, yada, yada, yada. Now, I don't know where I fall on this one mm. because of the simple fact that, you know, I, I feel that if you're going out and you're cosplaying and you're having a good time, it really shouldn't friggin' matter. Yeah. But at the same time, like, if you're cosplaying, you know, like a uh, a Red Lantern, mm. and I walk up to you and I talk about, like, the pool of blood or something like that, and you look at me like I'm mentally handicapped. Yeah. Like, sometimes it's just like, okay, but you are the one that's in the costume trying to portray this character. Like you know, See, you sh- that's the problem I had. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I fall more on the, the side of, I mean, yeah, do what you want. Mm-hmm. Would, absolutely whatever makes you happy do it however when i do v yeah uh it hasn't, ha- it hasn't happened recently but i've noticed that the bigger conventions like megacon people challenge me all the time mm. and they don't realize that they i've expect watched you, they expect you to do the uh well the, they expect me to do like the little the little poem the, about... little, the 5th of november yes. thing and then i whip out i know i've memorized the entire introduction he has with evie yeah isn't well, like every every yeah, first verily, the v, yes, yes, exactly. Verily, most for yeah. that whole thing, and to top it all off, I memorized his entire speech addressing London on the well, television. Let's hear, it. let's hear it on the No Podcast. I'm challenging you now. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, because then I'm gonna I'm gonna have performance anxiety and I'm gonna fuck it up. So <laughs> you're just, you're just <laughs> fucking with me now. But my whole my my, my cosplay. Uh, Never mind, I was going to say something really appropriate, really inappropriate. <laughs> really a super appropriate. Yeah, super appropriate <laughs> for the children's out there. No, but, like, but, I've noticed that, it, and it, uh, for some reason, I get super embarrassed if I do it without a mask on. See. For, it's so much easier to have the costume on and do it. I, I get Because I have that. no anxiety at that point. See, I'm challenging you all this entire podcast. Like this is this is gonna be the this is gonna be the podcast where we come to blows. It's gonna sound like like a like a movie, you know, <laughs> like you know, some, like we'll have to go get some like uh, some things to make sound effects, like some celery, and slap it against like the you know the you know, the couch. I or got like carrots. That. If you hold a carrot up close to the microphone, it sounds like and breaking snap bones or something. It, it might sound like a breaking bone, but at this yeah. point, they're probably all soggy. So, well, then you just the take fridge. those and slap them on the <laughs> slap them on the chair, like and it'll sound like yeah, somebody whacking it. That's not gonna be good. <laughs> Are they fighting or or what's going? What are I my don't, listening? I, I'm to? done listening to this podcast. These guys are disgusting. This is like gross, ugh. mushy sounds. Yeah, I, good. They started off good, but now, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> who watches this? Like, or who listens to this? People with weird voices. Oh man. So yeah, uh, yeah. Cell phones aren't safe. Just so you guys know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, cosplayers hate me. Do they? Yeah, cosplayers. Hate I, you. I brought this up last episode, mm-hmm. but I never. Like they actually hate you? It. Like if they started no. like a like we hate we hate no, Felton no, no, Hot no, no. Fan Club or But my, my my issue is and I'm not Oh, so you get like the, the angry I get the face dirty looks. you get the angry face uh emoji on the likes on Facebook, right? Instead no, of No, <laughs> no, I'm saying like at the actual cons. Here's okay, oh. here's my here's and I might be I might be reaching. Mm-hmm. You know, I might be off in left field. Yeah, you might be um, paranoid. I might be paranoid. Mm-hmm. However or delusional. Or well I am. I oh, okay. I am well. delusional. Um, I have, the paranoid, I have delusions of grandeur. Paranoid so and delusional. I like, actually, I, I'm borderline think, personality disorder according to the last test I took. So uh, I think there's only maybe ten people listening to the podcast, but ten people to me is like ten thousand. So <laughs> that's <laughs> so at least these, those ten people will know my beef. Yes. So all right. So I've been to MegaCon. I've been to DragonCon. Uh, Nerd Fest, uh, you know, bunch bunch of cons on the East Oh my Coast. god, just I mean, just keep I'm going, I'm like, yeah, like <laughs> my resume, <Yeah>. is, <laughs> but you know, the same like four basically for the last eight years. Real quick, okay? do you have cards? Have you started making cards to hand out like for people to go to? Like, you know your... what? That's really that's a good I, idea. Yeah, I'm talking to my girl about doing that same thing. Like you, they're not very expensive to make. You know, you make go a to little. Oh film. my god, I've always yes. wanted to go to Kinkos. I'm telling you, now you got a reason to go to Kinkos. Shit. So I now I got have a couple reasons to go to Kinkos. Oh. For the nub, I Podcast need to make nub. Card. Yes, I need to make a little nub. See, look, look, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm gonna put it in my note. Yep. Uh, nub. Biz, uh, 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 I'm leaving this in. I'm not cutting up my typing. No, sound. absolutely. So nub business card. So they know that you actually were typing, even yeah. though you were just slapping the keyboard. You're not actually putting anything <laughs> up there. But it's like hacker typer. <laughs> hacker man. So I'm at I'm at the conventions, right? Uh-huh. I've got authors. I've got celebrities. I've got 
just people attending the convention, wanting pictures, hanging out, just, oh my god, loving the, the, the effort that I put into the costume to look even remotely accurate. Absolutely. I know it's not screen accurate. Men, women, but, children, like, yeah. you know, Steven, Steven women, Spielberg, like, women, is men, calling you up. Yeah. all of it. Yeah. I actually got uh, uh, an accolade from a, someone who was a personal friend of Alan Moore oh my one god. time. I, I'm not serious. No, I was that's at, actually really I was cool. At like, this like, I'm, not even, I'm, not even, I'm not even giving you a hard time to stop. I'm actually like, genuinely, genuinely he, at all. He takes my picture. He goes, hey, oh, let me get a picture. You're going to love this. I'm personal friends with Alan Moore. Well, hold on. Now, he's going to love this. How do you know he's personal friends with Alan Moore? Like, did, did he bring his phone up and has, he's just like, and he's got like, the guy a, has, I don't know. He's got like a dog Moore like on his phone. Yeah. like. He did, and that's what it said. How yeah. did you know? Well, I mean, I mean, he could have been full of shit. Yeah. That's... But you know what? It made me happy. I mean, that's and... what that's what I do to pick up cosplayers all the time. I'm like, hey, listen, yeah. just so you know. I'm... So that yeah. old guy with a beard was trying to hit on me. That's great. <laughs> no, but he said, I'm personal friends with Alan Moore. He's going to love this. Uh, me and, and Stan like, Lee are tight. Like... I'm pretty sure he's not going to like it, but I'm pretty sure he's going to hate it. Like, yeah. I predominantly based it on the movie, and he didn't like the movie. He's like, oh, no, he loves the, the movement with anonymous, all, all that stuff. I'm like, all right. As long as he doesn't want to, you know, sue me for something, I don't know. I mean, but uh, he's gonna love it until he sees you in court. <laughs> yeah, he, then he's gonna hate you. But my my biggest issue is, I, I, you know, all these people love the cosplayers that are attending the con, right? Just people that are there. Yeah. But then you have the ones that are being featured, like they invite the cosplayers to be featured. Yeah. And I've always noticed I get zero interaction, mm -hmm. zero response. And they just sit there and they look with kind of like a stink face at me. Yeah. And I it's found... almost like I t I'm taking attention away from them in their booth. And the only one, uh, 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 the only one, and I don't want to call him out, yeah. but uh, old guy cosplay, mm -hmm. he, he was so fucking excited to see all the cosplayers. Mm -hmm. He's such a positive guy. Yeah. And he, I got a great response from him. I think you're just having, I think you're just having some some bad interactions maybe mm. like i do feel like maybe some of the cosplayers i think i've said this before i feel like some of the cosplayers maybe don't even make their own cosplays you know they're yeah. more like models and you know they you know they, well i think i think that's a point too. and i think i think those are the ones that the might ones be that sell the guy. pictures because because uh when me and my girl went to megacon mm. you know we actually went to a couple of panels about cosplaying and things like that you know yeah. she's really into it you know she's getting she's gotten really good at it and you know really you know works her butt off at it so um you know we got to meet some of those cosplayers and yeah. those people were open they were friendly they like we had to talk to them afterwards like they were really cool but you those know? are like, the ones that are selling they're like actually doing the cosplay making the props maybe even exactly. selling the, doing they're making, commissions they're making everything from scratch they're you know they're, they're not not so much selling the photos and i think that i think, they, I an think important maybe point. they do sell a couple of photos but see when they start selling the photos though like then then you start moving into a into like the genre I'm of a model this is yeah this is almost porn you know kind well, of well i mean I, I mean yeah. sometimes i, I I don't know. I always, you know what my biggest pet peeve is though? I always unfollow them. When, when I get one that's like, you know, goes that progression, they make cosplay, They're pushing hard they do for the, the props, pictures and, and then, yeah. oh, Patreon and, and like risque pictures. I'm like, yeah. uh, that's not why I'm following you. You were a talented prop maker. Don't get, and... don't get me wrong. Like, you know, cosplay porn is probably, you know, really sexy for a lot of people and stuff like that. And I, you know, I get it, you know. Oh, like, I'm not sure. I, no, I, 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 I would not, I would not, if, yeah, if you put it on the computer right now, I wouldn't turn it off, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but right. what I'm saying is, you know, I, I respect more the craft, you know, like yeah. the time and effort put into it, you know. Like, I watch a lot of videos because I'm trying to, you know, I, I try to help with building props and things like that, you know, mm. for her cosplay. And I'm going to start doing my own cosplays, actually, soon. Yeah. You know, I want to do, like, a beast and um, and a, uh, a, a, ma a maestro, mm -hmm. so... You know, I'm looking into. I'm just gonna nod and be like, I know what Maestro is. Oh, I'm sorry. Maestro is the uh, is the evil future Hulk. Okay. And the best part is that he's balding, so he's basically like a big green uh, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so, like, every time I see, him, I'm just like, I'm like, yo, let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> you know uh, what's his what's Hulk Hogan's real name? I have no idea. Terry. Oh, you're right. Yeah, it I is love Terry. that. I love that court case. And he's like, oh, Hulk Hogan has a giant penis, but I, Terry, I, I have an average penis. Like, the <laughs> way that that, that the way that that court case worked yeah. with the, the whole porn video that was made mm -hmm. was he's made money as Hulk Hogan as a character. And the reason that he won the case was because that was a video of him as a private individual. Yeah. So that I think the case law behind that's absolutely fascinating. <laughs> that the, this is how this is how it panned out. So I know I'm geeking out on on. <laughs> no, there's nothing wrong with that. When I, was I just up, think that that's hilarious. 
I was growing up, I was a huge Hulkamaniac. Yeah. My, my grandfather and I used to watch uh, wrestling back in the 80s like you would not believe. And Hulk Hogan and, and the Roddy Roddy Piper, you know, like, I like love you know, Roddy warfare Piper. between the two. Oh, my God. They live, jam. I think, is one of the finest examples of cinema. Yes, that has ever uh, the marketing been everything made. that was that was done with that was you know fantastic. the thing is and I and I thought they were they looked so hard into the future mm-hmm. and we're literally almost there I, I I feel I think we are almost there in, into they live oh they live okay yeah. you're talking about... <laughs> what what are you thinking I'm saying <laughs> you're talking about I thought we were talking about the actual like wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> the 80s you're talking you're, about <laughs> you're looking at me like i'm crazy i'm like no oh, now i get where you're going with they live okay that movie is fantastic hulk hogan's not in that though right that's just roddy no roddy that's piper. just roddy piper yeah. and the other fellow who died that's a number what, yeah. of years back i think that was the junkyard dog or something like that, that was I had a heart attack. Yeah, i think you did yeah but. that's sad anyways so unnecessary 15 yeah but i had fight. i had the hulk hogan vitamins i had like the you know hulkamania shirt i had all the little Ooh. rubber wrestlers like Oops. they didn't actually they didn't actually like move they just rubber and you just slam them against each other and like you know awesome yeah i was i was huge into wrestling when i was a kid i i loved it because i mean and this is almost a wrestling thing though uh stretch armstrong and vac man yeah that was like yeah it was basically wrestling that was yeah. wrestling well you have to understand too like, vac man was a genius you, toy by the way if you get down if you, if you really break it down you know it makes sense that i would love uh wrestling so much because i'm a huge fan of comic books you know and i'm a huge fan it's of like mythology yeah. it's the same thing you have the good guy and you have the bad guy and mm. they you know they're, they're villains and, and the heroes and they they perform these feats that are you know i'm still mad at jesse ventura for going back and forth between being a good guy and a bad guy oh see i love that like when hulk hogan became a bad guy like, I, I stopped betrayed. i wasn't watching wrestling at all in in the 90s until hulk hogan went and became a bad guy for was it nwo or yeah you know what nwa no that's not the right thing <laughs> <laughs> And then Jesse Ventura the became a governor, so I yeah. thought that was even better. That's that's being a bad guy, right? <laughs> yeah. God, I love that show. This is I'm Jesse Ventura. This is conspiracy theory. I I'm going to bring that up every episode. <laughs> that was so I wonder if taking steroids like makes you talk like that. Like in that, you know, let me tell you something, brother. Stretches out your vocal cords. Yeah, I don't know. Like, or maybe they were all just talking like that, and then when they get home, they have <laughs> a very nice proper accent. <laughs> Excuse me, dear, will you pass the butter, please? No, if I had that, vo- if I had that kind of talking, I would use that cadence everywhere I go. I don't care. I'd be fancy you know, British. No, the other one. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the wrestler one. I'd be at the restaurant. Like, what do you want to drink? Oh yeah, brother. Let me tell you, I want a cold glass of water. <laughs> And a bunch of lemons, because I'm making lemonade. <laughs> That's intense. I think you'd, you'd scare some people. Would you like to start off with an appetizer? Oh, yeah, brother. <laughs> Let me get those potato skins. I want to get them with the bacon and the chives and the cheese melted on them. I was over in uh, my job. I was over at City Hall. Mm-hmm. and uh, I think I, was, I just spit all over your microphone. That's fine. <laughs> I, was doing, uh, I was doing Randy Savage impression, and one of the ladies over there got really offended. I don't know why. I don't know if maybe it wasn't me, but she just got really upset. Well, you probably didn't know this, but she probably has like a a Randy Savage tattoo, no, on her back, like I don't know, like his full face with the big pink glasses with the weird like you know uh, pink zebra stripes on them, and like his (laughs) big pink orange bandana and stuff like that, and the hat. And that's not the first time this happened. I, you, I I have listen, offended other people with understand. my Rand, with my Randy Savage impression. Understand, Randy Savage was a god among men. He was a he was a beloved character. Yeah, he, also you. one of the best dragons in Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was that that video. I laughed. Well, I laughed at that. It's not just that though. I mean, let's 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 really break it down. Nobody could pull off neon mm, like Randy Savage could pull off. Like, like, he looked good. He could pull off neon like nobody yeah. else. I was no like nobody's. Business. I don't know if anyone's done it since. I mean, I know that the Ultimate Warrior tried, and I mean, he, he did okay. But let me tell you, when he used to come out there, he's like, <laughs> "Let me tell you something, brother." <laughs> and everybody oh, was a brother. I don't know. Hogan, I see you backstage, brother. You need to come out here. You said you were going to protect Linda. <laughs> but let me tell you something. A macho man had to come in and he had to save the day. I love that clip. And then the snap into the Slim Jim stuff. I mean, that used to just... <laughs> oh, God. <coughs> Every time I do it, I die a little bit. You almost bit. die. Yeah. <laughs> Every time it's, I it's a risk to my I health. Yeah, I, yeah. And, and my damn 
health thing says I'm gonna have a stroke, I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna die from doing Randy <laughs> Savage impression. That's just saying your stroke, your stroke. That's what it is. It, it predicted it had nothing. Like your health is perfectly fine. It's predicted that you keep doing the Randy Savage thing, which is bad for your health. I guess I should read the fine print. I'll see in there. Don't do Randy Savage impressions. And, and actually, by the sounds of it, it won't even be like your body shutting down. Somebody's be. going to actually murder you because. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> because is that what happened to him? No, but I'm saying, like, you're going to get oh. murdered because you keep offending people with the Randy Savage thing. Oh, Somebody's going to rip their shirt open. It's going to be a giant mural of Randy Savage on their chest. They're going to be like, let me tell you something, brother. They just trip, choke slam me. That's yeah, it. I'm going to snap you like a slam. While I'm coughing. And then it's going to be the perfect storm. That's it. Oh, my God. How did this become the wrestling podcast? I don't know. All right, so what else do you got to oh, talk oh, about? Uh, did I mention uh, the steampunk bar yet? Well, did we finish the story about how... How the uh, cosplayers hate you. Oh, yes, well, we're, we're, I, I, we've gotten I past that, right? I think I know we got a little sidetracked. I, I, you know, like I said, I'm being this paranoid. This is the ice cream truck thing all over again. It is. is. It is. I, I, I'm probably being paranoid, but when literally every... I hate using literally. I, hate, uh, I literally everyone, hate using literally. Everyone else at the convention is joining It's like it. using totes and... Toast my goats. Toast my goats and everyone's enjoying it, but soup. the featured cosplayers. And and again, you know, there's there's super great ones like Yaya. She's you know, she's yeah. super positive. Yeah. You know, she she's given given me a oh ha ha good great before. But understand that she also builds everything from scratch. She's yeah, like, exactly. Th- again, I, th- I, I don't, think you're I, onto something. Though. I might be I might be talking out of turn. Yeah. You know, I might be just talking out my ass to be quite honest. Yeah. But it seems to me. Mm. Because all the like, when I go with you know when I go with uh, with my girl like she gets accolades from you know people and from cosplayers it seems you know mm-hmm. but again you're, those booth girls have nothing to do with it seems like nothing to do with anybody that's in costume you know it's 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 almost yeah. like Meh. except for a select few and those select few I know for a fact build their stuff from scratch so the other ones I don't know maybe they do maybe they don't well you know that's funny you mentioned that because the more I think about it like maybe they have resting cosplay face. Instead well, because even even there's mid-trace. one that there's one a couple in um in uh, Atlanta mm-hmm. they're Atlanta based yeah and they they they've done just some ama- he uh, she made him a uh, Reaper of Reaper of Souls a Diablo oh, three that's cool. like the whole yeah. and he's a tall guy too mm-hmm. and uh, they're they're super positive too yeah you know they they've you know given given me props in the past and you know I, I well, think you're onto something that's the way cosplay should be you know mm-hmm. like I I I posted memes on on the nub before about this you know like mm-hmm. uh. You know, there's been a, it was like a picture of a, a girl who's, it's a, a drawing and her cosplay was really on point with these big wings and all this other stuff. Yeah. And then there's a, then there's another cosplayer who's got like, you know, cardboard, you know, stapled together, you know, but sometimes, like, but well, what I'm saying is <laughs> but she was like, she, you know, she was like, you know, she was like, oh my God, like so excited about, you know, about the other one's cosplay that was like kind of, you know, kind of thrown together. Or whatever. Mm. I wouldn't even say thrown together. I mean, obviously, you know, like we're just well, well, to do it, but you know, they're obviously just starting out or, you know, that kind of thing. So I think that's the way that cosplay should be in general. You know, yeah. it needs to be a positive thing because it, it's, you are showing a love for the things that you enjoy. So why not praise other people for doing the same thing? Well, you know, you know I, and it's funny you mentioned that because I don't even remember at Megacon there was a guy who had a, he had a great like rugged looking vault suit, yeah, right, and he had made like a pit boy out of EVA foam, but it was kind of like big and comical, yeah, and the thing looked awesome to me. I thought it looked fucking great, mm-hmm. so I'm like, oh, dude, let, let me get a picture because it was him, his wife, and their kid, oh, and she had cool. I don't, she had this like rebar hammer with the concrete on the end, yes, and that shit looked. Legit. I saw these two girls walking around Megacon that were dressed in in the uh, the Fallout stuff. I mean, they had they had the license plate shoulder pad, yeah. like the whole. I mean, they they really decked out. I've just seen a lot of the Fallout cosplays, which are fantastic, and I love the Fallout cosplays for the simple fact that the, each one is so original because it's, you know they've just taken the concept of you know armors and weapons and things like that, and they create their own look for the cons and it's mm. just, i just love that i think it's fantastic it's like it's like yes you're, you're cosplaying for the game but yet at the same time you still get to be an individual yeah and a it's, lot of those look comfortable too it's like the ghostbusters cosplayers have you seen have you seen this yeah like they all have their own name yeah their own last name on there like they're, they're not they're not copying you know any existing ghostbusters you know they make their own proton packs and they mm. you know they really get into those proton well, they're kind of going off the canon though of uh, correct me if i'm wrong but i thought like within the series, they 
gave room for that. You know, like other branches of Ghostbusters opening up. I don't know. Up. I mean, I know they never. Did I, the I thought they left it open. I, I, that's yeah. I feel. I feel like maybe that's the direction they maybe wanted to go eventually. Because I, I thought it was supported I by Ackroyd and all of them, like signed oh, well, off on the Ghostbusters about, groups. Like, oh, if you're talking about the Ghostbusters groups, yeah, that is that yeah. is complete. You know, that they have. There's one in every state. There's. Mm. I was watching a whole thing about this on Netflix, actually. Really? Yeah. There's a. It, I, is there a Ghostbusters uh, documentary on Netflix that I need to really watch? Is. Yeah, I think it's called. I think it. Uh, Bustin' makes me feel good. <laughs> I really want to say it's called Bustin like I really, I really want to say it's something like uh, yeah, copyright strike for that old shit. Oh yeah, we're gonna get screwed. <laughs> I want to say it's like Bustin' or something like that, you know. But but it's it's all about just look it up on look you know look through your Netflix documentaries and I know it's in there. Yeah. But it was really interesting because every state has their own their own patch too. There, it, you know, the ghost in the in the a lot of effort goes into there's it. A, there's a different version of so that. So it's like the five hundred first, state. you know. Exactly. That's okay. exactly what it's like. So. And so they get to be original in that sense, but yet still get to do the, you know, dress up like Ghostbusters and, you know, they go to like kids' hospitals and all that kind of stuff. No, I've seen, I've seen them for the doing the visits and stuff. There's actually one locally here, um, and I don't remember the name of them. So uh, these things, I guess I'll just have to start like putting, you know, like side <laughs> notes afterwards. Like, notes. by the way, um, uh, and, I remembered. Yeah. But, um, I'm actually trying to get them to come out to the Haunted History Tour to, yeah. uh, to meet and greet, uh, our, our, you know, customers that are coming out there to mm. support the the event, um, but you know they they were at Nerdfest. They've been you know to a lot of the oh, yeah. to a lot of these things, and they you know they're really they I've got seen their, them. With, they've got like the Ecto One or yeah, something like that. Yeah. Or... So we've got one here. We got you know they're all over the place. Mm. So I think it's really cool. I mean, I I would love I would love to cosplay as my own Ghostbuster, you know, thing. I just want to do it, and this this is stupid mm-hmm. but i wearing a jumpsuit yeah. would be so comfortable <laughs> especially like i'm not wearing underwear another thing if i'm mm-hmm. doing it like, well i mean every I'm not wearing one of my damn costumes is it. either stifling or tears up my skin on my arms see i'm either gonna i'm either painful. gonna do ghostbusters or a creepy clown either one either way you're wearing a big onesie basically so <laughs> <laughs> you got that text i sent you right with the with the yes the, the various uses of guns for the yes, types of clowns shotguns clowns. are for big clowns sniper rifles are for far away clowns just so you know we're gonna for we're, groups of clowns we're gonna post that picture on the nub <laughs> so that you guys can see it oh oh man did i mention did i talk about the steampunk bar yet no. Wait, okay. Wait, wait. I keep interrupting P- you when you keep C- trying to go. To Keats. The... It's called PC Keats. PC Keats. PC Keats. Shout out to PC Downtown Keats. Melbourne. It's PC Keats. Punk go ahead and uh, you can go ahead and uh, <laughs> sign the check uh, to. <laughs> no, I just United I don't even remember when I brought that up, but probably like the first or second. I think it was episode. like the very first episode. And then you know, again, I'm looking at my news feed. Oh, steampunk meetup. Oh, by the way, there's a steampunk meetup at uh, PC Keats. All right. So anybody uh, out there that wants to go to a cool steampunk uh, event at PC Keats, <laughs> I, I could look it up. Again, uh, I'll well, probably post again, it in the I'll comments. Post it, well, I'll post it on the nub. I'll yeah. post it on the nub. You, you can go. check it out there. Uh, like I do. I, I hope you guys are liking the fact that I put local events up there uh, that you know are nerd related, so you guys know what's going on. Mm. Uh, just so you guys know too, they're listening. You know, I get no money for any of this. You know, like all these things that I set up that I set up to you know, for you guys to see is basically so you just know what's going on in the nerd community so just in case you think i'm getting some kind of fat check from <laughs> you know the, the the nerd stores and stuff locally it's just not happening no but if the if the nerd stores locally would like to start making me out fat checks again make the checks out too you can have no problem uh uh endorsing that and putting the information exactly out there. They're like, hey, by the way, this is endorsed by... So now you know that the name of the place is PC Keats. PC Keats! PC Keats! Ah, oh, that was bugging me, too. And I know and for, that's like, where you days... And that's where you did the... Is that where your, uh, your that's Pokemon, where the Pokemon, Pokemon tour Pokemon stopped Pokemon or started? So, uh, started. Started, okay. Yeah, I don't... Uh, we didn't finish it, actually. Okay. Because I I think, I, again, I'd been awake, like, 24 hours at that Man. point. So I was pretty much, you know, wasn't even really playing Pokemon Go. I was yeah. actually seeing Pokemon, like, <laughs> you know, in front of me. Yeah, so like actually seeing them. Like actually in front like, of me. Yeah. It was bad. You know, lack of sleep will, will get you. Oh, man. Uh, tell me about it. I work 16-hour shifts, and then, you know, sometimes I can't sleep the next day and go into another 16-hour shift, so. Yeah. And we're back from another dog-related incident. I'll just leave a, a pause there. I love the dog-related incidents. <laughs> The dog cast. <laughs> the dog cast. Dog cast. You're listening to the dog cast. So we're... PC Keats, all that stuff. Another thing I, I wanted to bring up too uh, after that, and it's been well, in the back quick, of my maybe mind. Maybe we're approaching this whole podcast thing wrong. Like we should maybe like sound like uh, like disc jockeys on here, like while we're talking. Like you're listening to the Nub Podcast. That no. was another dog related. No, okay. Well, all right. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, no. 
Shut down. I'm not even. I'm not Shut even going to joke gonna about that. Gonna, that. Gonna <laughs> that's one of the most. Uh, it, that's okay. Here's my problem. John, no, it wasn't John Tesh. That one of these radio shows. I remember they were the, okay. This is the early days of the internet, mind you. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is when the jokes and the memes were like, you know, you you had to be on like 4chan or. Do you say GIF or GIF? It, uh, neither. No. I don't. You just don't even. You don't even. You no, don't even I say it. animated image. Nice. I avoid the issue altogether. <laughs> I don't know who I'm going to offend. So. I just remember one of these radio guys, and maybe this was just like a northern radio station, I don't know, but they tried to pass off one of these soundboard recordings with, uh, um, my name is Richard Roma, Al Pacino, right? And I remember hearing it verbatim months and months before on, uh, I don't even remember if it was E-Bombs World or what website, right? And I think it was not well known enough, so this, you know, radio disc jockey, he could get away with saying that, oh, we did this prank. Yeah. And you didn't. No. I, I saw that on the internet. Wait, are you yes. saying that you want to do pranks now? <laughs> it's make... just a prank, bro. No. We're going to make phone calls? No. Although, I don't know. Hi, is this Susan? Did I talk yeah, about... Yeah, Susan, your mother died. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Did I talk about what I've been doing to telemarketers? Yes. But I you did. didn't talk about it on here. Oh. So, I've been getting a lot of unsolicited calls from Bangladesh, apparently. <laughs> And uh, they they have this automated message. We would like to talk to you about your two hundred thousand dollars small business loan you've been approved for. Press one to talk to an operator. Press two to be put on our do not call list. Well, after about ten times of asking to be put on their do not call list, I thought, well, if they're going to waste my time, <laughs> I'm going to waste theirs. So it, after about four or five times of doing this, they would call. I would press one to talk to an operator and i would set it right next to my speaker Mm -hmm. and i would play uh modem sounds Mm -hmm. and it's like a five or ten minute loop of modem sounds i i hate to i hate to even bring this up Mm. but you do realize that there's gonna be a lot of people that listen to this podcast that won't even know what modem noises are yeah yeah can you believe that that google Google modem sounds for you young folks (laughs) so I play it the first time I do it. I'm thinking this is hilarious, and I hear, and, I, and I'm not spoofing a voice. This guy actually had this action. Hello, hello, sir. Literally five minutes go by. The phone hasn't hung up yet. It's on speakerphone. I'm just sitting there like choking. I'm laughing so hard quietly <laughs> to myself. And another, you know, and, and I'm looking at the call. It's been at that point like six minutes. Mm-hmm. Hello, sir. <laughs> I'm like, he's still on the line! This guy's dedicated. And then he hangs up! I'm like, no way! This guy's dedicated. No! And it would be even funnier if, he's, if he were to call you back. <laughs> well, it was the, and, and again, you know, same extension, number out of, uh, you know, uh, uh, Minneapolis or wherever, mm-hmm. but Lord knows where the VOIP is being routed from. So, I <laughs> do it again. And this time it only lasted a minute. Mm-hmm. And then it did it again while I was at work. Well, phew, I got my computer, trusty computer right here. Motor noises. Boom. Held it up to the phone speaker or the computer laptop speaker. And that one lasted about 10 seconds. I haven't received a call from the small business loan telemarketers. Mm-hmm. It told me it took like four or five tries. I've got a similar story. Amazing. I've got a similar story. This year, uh, during tax season, my, uh, my ex. I didn't pay my taxes. I didn't pay my taxes. That's amazing. I, like, I saved really? so much money. It's exactly the same story. I wish. No. So, <laughs> I, I, I don't that? know. I think somebody's being killed in the other room. So we're a loudspeaker in, in, the other, in the other But, room. um, no, so, uh, my, my ex-wife calls me, freaking out. Yeah. She's like, oh my god, I got a phone call from the IRS, and they're telling me that, you know, that they're gonna audit us, <laughs> you know, for us. You know, all this stuff. I'm like, okay, first off, understand that the IRS is not gonna call you during tax season. Like, they're way too busy for that. You know, they're, they're not sitting around like, I should probably call these people, you. And, you know, and talk about, you know, so I was like, that's obviously fake. I was like, do me a favor, let me get the number. You know, so she gives me the number, and I call it, and it goes to an actual, you know, uh, call center, mm. where they're like, you know, hello, this, you know, this is so-and-so with the IRS, blah, 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 you know, uh, you know, who am I speaking with, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I talked to him for a little bit, and I'm like, so, well, actually, I take this back. Let's rewind a little bit. 
I actually call the IRS, mm. their 1-800 number, and it specifically tells you that the IRS will not be calling you. Like, if there's any <laughs> issues, they're going to send it to you in the mail. You know, yeah. if you get a phone call. They give call, you a notice about an exactly, audit in the mail. Exactly. If you get a phone call, it is, you know, it's obviously a scam. a scam. So I call them, and I'm and I'm talking to them, and uh, and like, oh, yes, you know, you owe so-and-so, you know, such and such money, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, okay, that's really cool. Um, can I ask you a question? They're like, they're like yes, you know, go ahead, sir. Whatever I can do to help. I'm like. Uh, when I call the actual IRS, uh, they tell me that they don't make phone calls, you know, and that they send everything in the mail. Click. So I'm like, well, that was rude. <laughs> so then for the next two weeks, every time I had a free chance, I was calling them. I would ask them questions about their day. I was talking to them about life problems and issues. I was like, you know, like the what? number worked. Yeah. They, it, well, wow. I actually, had, it, it worked for two weeks and then either I got blocked or they got rid of the number. Well, but they, 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 they laundered so these much, phone numbers. I was having so much fun though. Like for yeah. the longest time, like I even had a girl break down on the phone with me because, you know, I was like, why are you doing this? Do you have no soul? Like you're trying to jip people out of money and things like that. And she actually broke down, started crying on the phone. She's like, I I live in China and this is the way they pay my bills and stuff like that. I'm like I'm like you need a new job. <laughs> I I felt bad. I Why? told you I told you I convinced a guy I was a Mennonite from Pennsylvania, right? No. Oh, so it was probably about eleven o'clock at night. Uh, all my fun stories are when I'm working. So I'm I'm doing some some paperwork mm-hmm. and because uh, I'm a, an important accountant. Now, are you actually doing paperwork? Because when I say I'm like filing paperwork, you know, to, to no, the I was actually work. doing. I okay. I distinctly remember doing okay. paperwork. Because when I say coworkers. I'm filing paperwork, it means I'm going to go poop. On yeah. the, on the company. Team. No, no, I was, okay. I was I was doing paperwork, and uh, I get a phone call and I answer it, and this is odd because it was so late at night. I think that's really what what got me was the middle of the night call. So I answer, you know, uh, and and immediately immediately. Well, you know, once I know that it's a scam, yeah. and I'm talking to somebody. I put on, uh, I, I think I, I tried to do like some type of accent like this, you see. Mm-hmm. And what I did was I probably spent, oh man, forty five minutes on the phone with this guy. Yeah. And I talked to him about, well, how did you get this number? Because I, I, sir, I only have this phone, uh, for my business. You see, I don't have technology, and I'm and I'm worried that perhaps somebody has. You know, gotten my gotten a hold of my information like and the devil. Yeah, and and you know, I was trying to be like this genuine, like, and and I know nothing about Mennonites. I know yeah. nothing about the Amish. Well, obviously, the person you're talking to, <laughs> and they me. have no idea either. You're like, sir, I live off the land, and this this phone is the only connection I have for and, my business to, and I I pay for a lot in my community, and I'm the only one willing to do it. You know, because our our belief system, sir, is that this this stuff is unholy, and I. uh I, I don't enjoy doing it, but I have to. And yeah. I, I had to go to Best Buy, and I uh, I believe maybe. Is that how you got my number, sir? Was it the Best Buy people? And this guy, like, started asking me all these questions about being a farmer and living on the land and being in America. And I'm doing the best I can to answer this. Oh, my God. So he's grilling you. So he's, like, so interested in this. D- d- completely departed from trying to get my money at this point. So right? at this point in time, it's it's like Inception. Like, like the troll, you know, the trolling is being trolled. By the troller. Like, you were trolling him, and now he's trolling you, and now you're stuck inside this troll. Well, I don't know, because here's the thing. You think he was genuine? I think he was being genuine. Oh, wow. Because at the end of it all, he's like, oh, I'm I'm talking too long, I have to go. And, uh... My boss is going to hit me with a stick. (laughs) (laughs) He's going to hit me with the talk too long stick. He goes, sir... Oh, God bless you for what you do. You have given me inspiration to live a better life. Oh, my God. If he if he left and became a farmer so after this, this fella we need a follow-up to this story. I, there's no follow-up. This guy probably <laughs> went and became a farmer and got robbed and murdered, and that was it. You know, he was living a good life in the city, scamming people on the phone, and I got him killed. He's the first Amish man in <laughs> India. Like, just... like I, I literally... I, I Here's the thing, though. Just like his voice... He, he may have been the biggest bullshitter on the planet, but... You know what? I, I just I the way that he reacted at the end of that phone call, I just I feel like that was genuine. I don't know. I I, th- I think it's hilarious I think either way. There's a special place in hell for you after that phone call. Like, <laughs> either way, if the he devil, was just the fucking devil's with wait, me, the devil's waiting downstairs. Oh, like, he's oh, waiting man, with that, I can't with that wait hot poker to just jam a butthole. But either way, <laughs> Why if, does if it he always was, go in the butthole, like there's because I mean, that would be unpleasant. Could yeah, you imagine but, trying to poop with the, after well, really a, a hot rod has been putting up? I try not to imagine that. Yeah. Not one of my biggest Could you even imagine either. trying to poop just in general? Because <laughs> some people, it's painful. Yes. You get those hemorrhoids that look like a fucking alien mouth coming out your butt, man. This is like, sorry. Welcome that, to that the- just got too real. <laughs> too real for me, at least. 
<laughs> Welcome to the old man podcast. <laughs> so either way, it's Preparation hilarious. H is good on the whole. So <laughs> I just want to, just to sidetrack for a minute, because I don't hear it anymore. But this is a sidetrack of a sidetrack of a sidetrack. Of a sidetrack. Of a sidetrack. sidetrack I, don't, I don't want to, uh, I mean, I, I don't hear it anymore. But I was, you know, listening to the the droning of your uh, of your uh, your Roomba or whatever brand of, you know, robotic. Skynet. Yeah, Skynet vacuum. Exactly. Like every time I see those things, I think Skynet. You know, and I'm just I'm just thinking like, you know, it's gonna suck when I get killed by a Roomba someday. You know, yeah. like you know, I I could I could understand if it was like cool, you know, skeleton. The you robotic know, evolution, like, you know. But, Man, like it's gonna suck when one of those things just like knocks, make, makes you trip over it, and then just repeatedly hits me in the head until I die. Future vacuums are gonna kill you, is what you're trying to say. Exactly. Well, not just future vacuums. I mean, the cars are getting smarter, the computers are getting smarter. Every time I see like this new technology, I just think, dun dun dun. Do you dun. remember the movie Towering Inferno? Yes. And it was and about. I don't understand the... how that has anything to. Oh, because the, the it was the computer was system so... had the That's AI, right. and I always remember. That's right. I mean, the what fellow, does a burning building have to do with but yeah, it? Okay. The guy that was in the sauna, and here's my issue, okay? Uh, there was a fellow that got in the sauna, and the computer turned it up so much that he uh, exploded like a hot dog in the microwave. Mm-hmm. And I always had a problem with that. That that always just, like, that grossed me out just beyond words. Like, okay. I was terrified of saunas for many, many years. <laughs> to this day. To this day, I will not get in a sauna, especially if it's controlled by an AI. Yes. But my issue with that How was... How are you doing today, Joe? Yeah. Would you like it steamier? Would you like it hotter? Would you like it unsafe? <laughs> well, at what point? I mean, you have a sauna that people get in. Yes. Why would you even give it the capacity to go past a certain temperature? Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That like, does seem like... It that's like, inviting problems. It does seem like an engineering you know, faux pas. Is, you, you would know. think that the materials you would use could only get to a certain yeah. temperature. Exactly. Based on the capacitor, you know, all these things you would set up to make sure that it could only get X amount of degrees. But if it's being controlled by Skynet, Skynet's re you no, know, that don't matter all that though. Stuff, you, uh, you, you, you've know. got, you've got it, you've got hardware. Mm-hmm. Even if you overload the quote unquote hardware, you're just gonna start blowing fuses. That's true. You're not going to somehow make something get hotter that can only get so hot. So what you're telling me. Is that it's the movie Towering Inferno is not the, the, a real... The concept was bullshit. Not it, a real it, situation. Even at that young age, I was looking at that going, although I'm horrified of being hot-dogged, mm-hmm. uh, you know, blown up like a hot dog, Yeah, uh, that seems like bullshit. Like, I'm going to call bullshit on that. My bullshit meter and is... And for the rest of the movie, I was like, yeah, this is bullshit. That would never <laughs> happen. That would never happen. How the hell could it do that? That's fucking bullshit. These right? programmers are evil. Mm. Oh, it was like that stupid movie with the fucking kid that has the the war robot, right? And it shoots BBs, and somehow it oh, shoots toy soldiers. Was that I, no, it was no. like the one. It was like one thing that went serial killer. Oh. It was like a stupid robot on wheels. I told you that one. It started. Yeah, it was. A, I don't even remember the name of it. It was so bad. At least Chucky was like was like you know uh, controlled by magic. So. Yeah. Or this is just like this, a stupid kind of AI story. that's yeah. going around shooting BBs, killing people with BBs. It shoots it at such high velocity that it kills them, and it, <laughs> I don't even remember. I get, yeah, I get, I get to, that. This, like, is, why, this is becoming a weekly person... fucking thing, isn't it? Yeah, it I is. remember something, I talk about it, have no idea what the hell it's called. And then called. next and week, three we weeks tell later, you. <laughs> that movie was called Armageddon Machine, or, you know, some, Jesus. It's called BBs of Death. I guess it takes my brain that long to recall something that I, I haven't pulled, I haven't thought about that movie in easily over ten years. Nice. Just to think about that and reference it. And I want to say there was a, I'm coming up with a prediction, mm-hmm. there was a C in its name. A C. Yeah. The, maybe at the beginning of the name? Okay. I don't know. I just remember C and the blue text. I remember the movie poster for well, it. Well, keep listening to the Nub Podcast and probably three <laughs> podcasts from now. You will find out the name of that shitty ass scene on TV Stay movie. tuned. I'm pretty sure that it was on theaters at one point, but it was on the Sci-Fi Channel. Well, what else do you have? Uh, well, I got today? some I got some hot and steamy news hot from, from Will Wheaton. Felton. Hot. Will, I love Will, Will Wheaton. Wheaton. I love Will. Apparently, he recently did an Ask Me Anything. Okay, uh, and best. somebody finally said, "What was up with Jonathan Frakes and 
the way that he rikered over chairs. Okay. Because that was a that was a terminology that apparently mm-hmm. was used is how he rikered over a chair. Yeah. He would lift his leg over the chair and all the chairs were like halfback too yeah. in the Enterprise. So it was kind of weird. Well, well and in the future is... you don't need back support. Really? Um, you didn't know that? No. Everybody has everybody in the future everybody has biotic backs. You're actually born with them. Well, apparently he needed it. Oh, so the, the, this is the information that I that that is in the the uh, AMA is that Jonathan Frakes had a back injury by having a job moving furniture. Mm. So many years of being a furniture mover. So because they had to do take after take after take after take, it was a lot harder for him to get in front of a chair, bend over, and put his butt down in the seat. Mm-hmm. And if you look at the way, and it's so funny in looking at it now, you know, having back issues, I look at how he leans over the chair and, and you know, sits down in it. You just ruined my entire, like, next generation life now. When I watch the show, <laughs> I'm going to be like, oh my god, he's got back problems. I see it now. You see it now. But looking at it, I look at it, and now I go, yeah, that's a, that's an adaptation for having an injury. Like, I do that shit all the time. You've totally like, just hey. taken, you've taken, you've broken the third wall for me. You've taken down the, <laughs> the curtain of illusion. I see the wizard behind the curtain, and he's just a crippled old man. Like, <laughs> you've destroyed my entire my entire childhood. Thank well, you. I guess it was, I guess, you know, one take was fine, but doing it over and over and over and over and over again was hard on him. Well, it's like, it's like when I found out that Mark Hamill, um, uh, didn't actually get his hand chopped off. Well, yeah, that was that was obvious. That was shocking. That was, I couldn't. I still can't. I thought he. That. I thought he was like a method actor. I thought, oh my god, he actually let them cut his hand off. Wow. That's amazing. No, uh, in the uh, second movie, Return of the Jedi, is that the no? Yeah, Revenge of the Empire. Oh man, I am going to get so stomped out. Anyway, I'm not helping you. Yeah. So, on Hoth, you know how he work gets, through it. Work yeah. through it. <laughs> on Hoth, you know how he gets attacked by the uh, the, by the, well, Hwam- the Hwampa. Hwampa. No, he didn't get attacked by a wampa. The wampa is, yeah, he gets attacked by the wampa, sorry. And he has the, the scratches on his face and all that stuff, and, you know, for the rest of the series, he has the scars, because he actually had scars, because he was in a, a car accident, I believe, and he actually got scars from the car accident. So, yeah, that wasn't makeup. Holy shit. He actually got, you know, got, you know, scars and cuts from that, but I was like, I was like, man, it's some, some attention to detail that they continued this on through. <laughs> that really know. looked really good. The, yeah. the, the, everything was always accurate in every scene. It's yeah. like, well, how did they do that? <laughs> it turns out he actually got his face messed up in a car accident. <laughs> I was like, oh my I was God. I going to say, I don't really notice any scars on his face now. Well, I mean, you know, you're rich, yeah. so you, you, years ago. Right? Now, well, he's old now, so it's all wrinkled, so anyways, you can't really yeah, tell. It's, you all know, just, but, it's all covered up. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. so that was, I thought that was, uh, that was entertaining because for years I always made fun of him. And don't get me wrong, I I love Jonathan Frakes. Empire Strikes Back, by the way. There you go. You finally remembered it. Yes. You didn't Google it or anything. No. Uh, I I love Jonathan <laughs> Frakes. As a matter of fact, he did a show and and it was almost in the vein of like uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not. Mm-hmm. But I thought the way that he smirked and smiled and made puns and mm-hmm. it was beyond belief fact or fiction. I fuck. I watched that show. I think I'd probably That's, seen it every single That was like your original episode. idea for what you wanted to do like a podcast for, wasn't it? Oh, like, years yeah. ago, yeah. 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 I, no. I think we should do like an episode of that every now and again. Just like, you know, Tell stories. Factor. But factor we'd have to, we, have to, we have to sound serious the whole time. Like, we'll have to get Jonathan Frakes. No, we can, we can, we can fake it. Just be like, yes. Yeah, so well, there's enough audio we probably could. Susan. Have Jonathan Frakes as a ghost guest. Yeah. Susan, who lives in a trailer park, <laughs> claims that she was abducted by five aliens. Who then all tentacle yeah. raped her. <laughs> oh my god, oh my tentacle god. porn, Jesus. No. Hey, we're, we're not going down that we're not going down deep, that rabbit hole. That's a deep rabbit hole. Yeah. Cat girl hole. I don't know. <laughs> whatever whatever <laughs> I you don't want. want to even talk about the holes that are involved <laughs> with tentacle porn. Oh, you started it now. But that show, man, there were so many stories on that show where I thought for sure were bullshit. Yeah. And they were actually based on, like, an act. And then they would show the source, like, this is actually based on a story, this, that, or the other. They would give the like, actual citation. Was in MA, was in uh, uh, AMA was in format? AMA format, or, yeah. Or MLA format. You know, I, for years, wrote an MLA format, and now everybody wants uh, APA. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm like, oh, uh, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Nerds. Now you're talking about formats oh, for your papers. Dude, I, I, Nerds. I have no idea. I am so lost. There's not so really a lost. big difference between the two, like, honestly. Like, but it's... it's uh, yeah, but I always get dinged on stuff like, "Oh, this is too uh, inches too low," or I'm like, "What? It looks the same as the one you provided as an example." 
Don't dock me 50 points for that. It's bullshit. I wrote a perfect paper here. Oh, my God. I didn't plagiarize it. I should get an A just for that. Just for that, yeah, exactly. Just I wrote it myself. Just because I actually put the effort into writing the paper. <sighs> <laughs> I actually... I sent somebody a meme the other day because, you know, I, I actually... This is going to sound horrible. You send memes. Yeah, I do send memes all the time. Just, <laughs> I'm, a me- I'm a meme crazy. I, I meme too, you know. Yeah. Or meme, as you call it. Oh, no, I say it because one of my... One of my uh, older guys at work, he, uh... Hey, did you get that meme? <laughs> he said that! Because I sent you that meme. Have you seen those memes yeah, some online? Of them, some of them jiffies. <laughs> I, just, I sent I you died, a jiffy dude. and some memes. <laughs> I died, he said meme. But no. Uh, so, I'm known for a lot of my friends as the as the guy to go to if you want a paper written. You know, and I'm not, yeah. gonna, I'm not gonna lie, there's a little exchange of money and I write papers for people. I did it for tacos back in the day. Oh, well, you know, I'm too fat for tacos now, so... Yeah. Now it's just cash, just whole, cold, hard cash. And mm. they leave it on the nightstand, and they go. <laughs> I hand them the paper. I feel dirty and used. Do you and have, just... like, a, a you have a dark room with, like, mm-hmm. a table and a typewriter? Yes. And, and I, then... and I got, a, I got a smoking cigarette and an ashtray, even though I don't actually smoke. It's just and like, and... But, like, the single trail of smoke yes. is, like, coming up underneath the lamp. Exactly. And then you're back, too, and they come up, and you just you, you hand yeah. it to them. And, they, and, and then they hand you the And they envelope. try to talk to me, and I'm just like, just leave. Just go. Put the money on the counter. Or you, or you say something like... Was that all? Is yeah. it all there? Yeah. And they try and bring something up. You hear, him thumbing, you hear him thumbing through the paper to make sure that it's all there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, so I sent this meme uh, about uh, if you could write a paper the way it really was, or the way you really felt like writing a paper, and it was something like, let me tell y'all motherfuckers how this shit really <laughs> went down, <laughs> according to me. <laughs> I saw one where it was like, Get ready! I just had a Red Bull. Get ready to view my 3 a.m. hate film. Yes, uh... it was pretty much the same, <laughs> the same kind of concept. I saw that one too. <laughs> that made me laugh. Oh my I god! I enjoyed that. So, all right, I'm a big fan of YouTube. Okay? Oh yeah! Like I actually just changed some brakes uh, recently. You know, like the rotors and the brakes uh, by watching YouTube videos. Yeah. You know, and I, I replaced a mirror recently on a car. Like a bunch of stuff. You know. Uh, I like cook, you know, through YouTube. Like YouTube and I are, I am homies. I am a YouTube university graduate. Yeah. So, I kind of wanted to know because you and I, though we are both nerds, we have like we are very different in our in our spectrum, you know, of nerdiness. Of of nerdiness. Yeah. So I wanted to know like what are some of like your top five? I would say like it doesn't have to be like the actual top five. Like these are you know one through five. But what are some of the the YouTube channels that you that you frequent the most? Uh, well, like everyone, uh, I enjoy some H three H three. Okay, Ethan, Ethan and Hila, they're they're pretty entertaining. Um, I hate everything. Mm-hmm. He he's a, a pretty good satirist. I like him. Um, C Nanners, mm-hmm. he's an entertaining guy, and I'm just gonna group all of his friends in like yeah, uh, it's a one because that, the, the, when they branch off into all the little ones, and, and you know sometimes Gassy Mexican, I like watching him because he does voices and he's funny, and, <laughs> you know he's all right, but you know the C Nanners crew, um, Pootie Pie's been making some interesting videos lately. See, this is this is how I know that we differ. This is funny because, like, you listen to or you watch uh, your YouTube videos, you know, more for like the comedy and the commentary and things like that. Whereas, like, this is the hardcore nerdy me. I guess I watch mine more for the actual information. Like, I watch uh, Comics Explained, mm. you know, or Rob Explains is, is his little. Oh, those, his other. Oh no, I got I got I get my other ones too. I um. Well, but what I'm saying, like, but those are those are my those are my tops. That's why I like, mm. you know, like I watch Dice Tower because I like to get the news of the new board mm. games that are coming out and things like that. Um. I've been watching a lot of, uh, well, this isn't YouTube, it's clips from Penn and Teller, mm-hmm. Fool Us. Yeah. I've been, oh, I have those been, are, yeah, those I are have been cool. into that. I watch every night now. I watch all these because for me, the, the story behind the magician and them doing the act, I just think, and then I love, uh, Penn when he talks about like when they're trying to debunk the trick or figure out how they did it. Yeah. His, his, uh, wealth of knowledge on oh well that was uh you know that was a great spin on Melini's egg bag and <laughs> you know he's trying to give hints that he knows how they did it and I just I love th- those two guys are brilliant though let's oh, be honest God, like, they, are they are and they're funny like mm-hmm. absolutely funny uh one of the like I like to watch Geek and Sundry especially oh, Geek they, Sa- uh critical yes uh, penguins yes on, on his penguin zeros or whatever critical what's up everybody he he fu- <laughs> he fucking kills me man and then uh. The one that I'm really addicted to right now, though, is Shoddy Cast. I love Shoddy Cast. I love Shoddy Cast, especially uh, what's his name uh, that does Dean all the Bethesda. science. Yes, 
It's me. It's me. Uh, what's his name? Austin. Austin. <laughs> it's, it's, it's me, Austin. Did you did you see his uh, his redo on uh, Roadhog? Yes. I that fucking that was like twenty minutes or something. The guy is that brilliant. He's absolutely that brilliant. Absolutely that brilliant. absolutely just, killed me. I think me. his newest one was on the Gravity Gun from Half Life, oh, and he God. was blowing my mind. I'm like, I'm like, I actually understand Gravity better now after listening, <laughs> after watching <laughs> Shotty Cast, after watching Shotty Cast, and I hope he's not talking out of his ass because now I'm gonna look like a complete idiot. When yeah, I'm like, you know, you guys have at a like dinner a party, and I'm like. Yeah, you know, I'm at a dinner party with a physicist, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, light and blah, blah, blah. Neil deGrasse just... Tyson is going to listen yes. to this. And he's going to go, <laughs> these guys. These idiots. I, Degrassi, I said that on purpose. And, of course, because because I'm a child, you know, and an idiot, <laughs> I, I uh, Epic Rap Battles is probably like... Nice Peter. Oh, Let me tell God. you, nice to this amazing. day, my favorite one is the Russian rulers one. <laughs> Where it starts off as uh, Rasputin versus mm-hmm. uh, Lenin, I think. Yep. I I memorize. It. I've listened to that so many times. I would say I'd sing along with it, and no, then me, Putin would come up. Oh man, that was fucking Bill weird. Nye versus Sir Isaac Newton. That one was good. That is fantastic, especially when Neil deGrasse comes in to save the day. It's like, <laughs> oh my god. I love. I uh, still though. I just I, and anything. I here's the problem. I think Rasputin is such, and this is a horrible thing to say, mm-hmm. such a funny, as a character. <laughs> he's such a funny character. Oh, yeah. He, because he seemed like a very comical guy in history. It just seemed like he, he probably got a lot of laughs, I'm sure. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, <laughs> just like the entire concept of this guy, he was such a fucking con. Yes. Like, he had the fucking world by the balls. But that is so <sighs> many people like that. Like, look at Adolf Hitler. Like, but his Jesus look, too. Christ. His look. Just with the robes and the, yeah. you know, being a mystic and, and then you got guys like, you know, Aleister Crowley and mm-hmm. like all, all these fellows across history. Mm-hmm. I, I still say my, what, to this day, one of my favorite ones, oh, is Harry Price. Mm-hmm. I thought uh, you were about to say Harry, Harry Potter. I'm like, oh, okay. Harry, you know, Harry Prince or Harry Price, I'm the dumbasses. I forget one of my favorite people's names. Of course. But he was a, uh, he worked for, or he worked for the University of Edinburgh, mm-hmm. right? And this was back when you know philosophy and studying ghosts could actually be a a real thing. A, a real you know <laughs> a enriching study that's, into things. That's kind of where they were going with the whole Ghostbusters uh, movie, the first one. You know? Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're kind of going and, off. That. And I kind of think they based it off. Of him. As a matter of fact, I think that may have referenced him in it. And just a little side note. They probably did reference. Or they probably did reference him, you know, and you know, read the books and things like that. Because did you know that uh, I believe it was Dan Aykroyd? I'm gonna be. I'm gonna get so slaughtered again here. It's either Dan Aykroyd or one of the other actors who I think it was Dan Aykroyd. Uh, his family was really into that, the paranormal studies and stuff like that, to the really? point where they were like, you know, like it was like a real thing in their family. You know, wow. So that like. But a lot of the a lot of the stuff in Ghostbusters when you watch it, I wouldn't say it's necessarily accurate per se, but it's a lot of you know like it was a lot of the pseudoscience and things like well, that. The, that they... the, the thing I love about him is the conflict of interest. Yes, because he he went out and he debunked all these mystics, mm-hmm. right? Yet he himself was part of one of the only documented and approved seances. <laughs> you know who else <laughs> like, is like that? You know, you know who else was like that? Harry Houdini. Yeah, Harry Houdini hated mystics. He hated, you know, uh, card readers. He hated the whole nine yards, you know. But when you get down to it, how did he make his money? He made his money by making these illusions that people would, you know. Yuri Gilgamesh. Yuri, what the hell is that guy's name? There's, there's one who's really big over in Europe. I want to say his name is Yuri something. Yuri but something. he's real big in in being. Uh, we are so prepared for these podcasts, right? God, I gotta fuck. I gotta think of it because I get this. I get these, you know, things I think of throughout the week mm-hmm. that I want to talk about. But uh, yeah, but if we script it too much, then it like you know it that gets, takes like, the fun away. Yeah, then we're just like then you're just reading. Hello, uh, uh, so very yeah. this vicious uh, war of verb is veers most for both. So simply, simply, yeah, this is my very good honor to meet you, and you may call me V. Like, oh, so you did it now. I challenged no, you earlier. Like you're not going to do but, it, but uh, okay. That's just the tail So now you just do it on your own. Okay. Yeah. No, but like it, it, you know, it would. It would sound way too. It would sound way yeah, too way scripted. too scripted. Yeah. You know what's funny is whenever I do that, I cannot quote certain things on my own voice. Really? Yeah, like uh, Charlie Chaplin and the Great Dictator. You have I, to. I cannot recall that in my own voice. Mm-hmm. I have to do it 
in Charlie Chaplin's voice. And well, that's a good four minutes. There's speech. actually a study of that in psychology, which cracks me really? up. And I don't remember what it's called, but, but like, if you've seen the meme where, uh, it's Morgan Freeman and he's saying some things like, uh, like you're reading this, this in my voice. Yeah. It's like, titty sprinkles or something like that <laughs> he's like, and then at the end it's like now the funny part is you just read that in my voice oh people my people do that god i saw a gentleman who could have been his brother the other day really guy looked exactly like morgan Are you freeman. sure it wasn't morgan freeman just kind of like wandering around i don't think he thing? works at a hotel as a night auditor you don't know how maybe he's researching, <laughs> maybe a, role, he's researching like, a role i don't know he didn't have sunglasses on but you don't know how big a method i don't want to bring it up because i never met the guy before so I, you know maybe if i have to go back there then i'll be like man you y- you know who you look like right like let me tell you something you could make money on doing celebrity lookalike stuff. Just and then he leans in closely to your ear and he, and he whispers, I'm not a lookalike. <laughs> he leans in closely to your ear and he goes, Titty sprinkles. <laughs> <laughs> in the Morgan Freeman voice. <laughs> oh! Oh my god! <laughs> Why is it? Lawrence Fishburne is what I'm saying. Well, oh, did so I, was I just, the wrong person. Was I just going off of that so it was then Morgan Freeman? Le- yes, you time? were, exactly. So then he leans in and says, Do you think that's how you're breathing? <laughs> <laughs> Take the blue pill. No. <laughs> Let, let me let me uh, retcon some of this. Yes. All right, uh, Lawrence Fishburne. You just destroyed the entire podcast. I got, now I we got have to re-erase so excited. All this. I got so excited about it. Lawrence Fishburne. Let me mm-hmm. correct myself. Yep. Uh, <laughs> well, on that note, we're at about an hour. Yeah. I just I just like how now all black all black actors are the same for you. <laughs> yeah. No, and you got to understand my, my my mindset there is I'm just so excited thinking about this. Like, oh, I is saw it, Lawrence Fishburne. Is it like. Lawrence Fishburne? Chris Rock. Oh, or don't, Morgan don't, Freeman. no, don't, no, no, no. <laughs> All right. Well, on that on that note, now that we've turned ourselves into racists, I'll start the music right now. All right. Well, so we'll, we'll play like the to, outro. I'd like to thank you all for listening to the uh, Nub Podcast again. Uh, no real announcements this week. I think we'll probably do some more announcements next week. Some more. Uh, I think we'll start putting putting some links down below about some yeah, local stuff that, that we actually, talk about. That actually would be might be a, a little idea. bit more convenient yeah. for people. Absolutely. So I'll leave that to you. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you. Tags. I'll send you the links, and then you can link. Just the don't links. put don't put ISIS in any type of tags or meta tags because yeah. then it will get demonetized and. We won't make any money. Or anyway. you'll get a free Galaxy Note 7. Oh, God. <laughs> it shows, just shows up at your door like... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, I hope you guys have yourselves a good week, and we will talk to you next week. Uh, this is The Merce. Felton. And we will talk to you later. Bye.